good afternoon. Thank you to, for the, uh, to the organization for having me here. It's a great pleasure to be back in Europe and feel this intensity of debate, and particularly to be here on the other side of Europe, uh, coming from Lisbon now. Um, in a way, what I want to talk about uh, is, uh, by coincidence or not so, a sort of response to what James uh, has just presented uh, in terms of political changes in the realm of citizenship over the last years. And um, in fact, uh, in a way for me, it represents the way that in which the field of architecture uh, is trying to react and trying to accommodate uh, those changes. And I will use three exhibitions that I've done uh, actually from 2012 until now uh, that in a way also represents uh, an idea that I have defended that through curating and through exhibitions one can perhaps continue the work of the critic uh, in terms of reflecting upon uh, pressing questions. So the first two images I want to present uh, one is from a website concerning the third exhibition I will present, and the second lower one is uh, from uh, the exhibition that I've organized in 2012 on occasion of the uh, European Capital of Culture in Guimarães in the north of Portugal. Uh, what interests me in these images is twofold. On one side, this idea that when the state is crumbling or when what we idealized as the social welfare state is crumbling and has no resources, just like anybody else, uh, how can citizens respond and uh, take matters in their own hands? I mean, the situation there doesn't affect the world greatly, but in a way it's a provocation and it's uh, uh, an act that makes you think about specific needs for specific communities. It's a very simple gesture, you could call it an artistic gesture, but is indeed uh, uh, created by a young architect who is probably unemployed, as many architects uh, in Europe at this time. On the other side, what you see is an example of what I've been calling uh, performance architecture. The fact that maybe architecture, in its uh, attempt to respond to these issues, uh, is uh, reapproaching certain tendencies in the art field and is becoming itself uh, closer uh, to artistic practices. And in that sense, I think uh, performance as, uh, in a way, uh, an appeal that can also work in architecture, because, of course, architecture is about the performance of the user, is about performances of construction, it's about uh, performances in the urban realm. So, in a way, what I want to defend here is that the field of architecture, in trying to respond to these issues, uh, is expanding outwards and downwards. Outwards, because uh, it's reaching for other ways of understanding the city, which are not typical of its disciplinary tradition and its uh, uh, cultural discourse, uh, and at the same time downwards, because precisely it's trying to respond to needs that are felt at the level of citizenship by anybody independently of their field of knowledge. Of course, I'm talking about a very specific and small part of the, art, of the architecture world in the sense that uh, mainly nowadays architecture has become uh, trapped in uh, an idea that it is only or it is but a service industry that responds to very precise technical demands. I think, again, here, the subfield of architecture is trying to escape that pressure and therefore uh, as I was saying, trying to ally with other uh, traditions and ways of thinking. 
So coming back to the idea of performance architecture, uh, this was an idea that for me started to make sense around 2005 when I saw that uh, some architects uh, were actually engaged in urban performances. Uh, that led inclusively to the idea that this rise of what I call performance architecture actually related to the situations that were taking place that James has described here very well. In a way, going into the streets and taking action was all about leaving the ivory tower of the academia, was all about uh, taking matters into your own end, not by design, not by way of the mediating tool of the project, but actually uh, by intervening very directly in the context that was certainly creating uh, a lot of pressure on people. So, uh, in a way, it went back to that tradition of performance art that indeed, at a certain point in history, questioned the art field itself, question its boundaries, and try to provoke uh, different and new reactions in the audience. I think architects realize that this would also be useful in their field, and at the same time, this could uh, be welcome as a sort of shock treatment in regards to what are, were and are still majorly the understandings of this field of activity. So to give you a few examples of what I would call performance architecture, you can see here an intervention by young architects uh, in Portugal, 2006, therefore anticipating 2008 by two years, in which they uh, mounted these tents uh, in a small alley public space uh, in Lisbon as a device uh, that would welcome homeless people. So these tents were open to homeless people in the city of Lisbon. They had a bottle of champagne and an iPod so that people could listen to music. And it was there during uh, this festival. In a way, uh, and I think this is very interesting and gets, again, architects closer to the uh, field of art, uh, these architects were acting as seismographers of something that was just about to become very expressive. Uh, another work I have been following and inclusively uh, brought to the collection at the Museum of Modern Art uh, in New York uh, is the work of Didier Faustino, an architect that became an artist and by changing fields started to do things that would be considered illegal or not lawful in terms of the architectural discipline. Uh, two examples uh, that I find pretty revealing uh, uh, deal precisely on one side with ideas of exclusion that we have um, uh, talked about here today, and the other one on ideas of understanding and perceiving public space from a new lenses, from a new point of view. And the first one there, just for you to understand what's going on here, because contemporary art, art like contemporary architecture, does need explanation, uh, this is an extraction of the typical stairs of a housing project uh, in Portugal, in this case, uh, which represents typically uh, the kind of stigmatic space that is created by social housing. So what he did when he was uh, asked to produce a monument for public space within such uh, a housing complex was to extract these stairs out into the open and make it a site of performance. And so these stairs, which are exactly the same materiality as you have in the inside of the buildings, was put on the outside to become a basketball field for one. Then there are questions of voyeurism, of surveillance that also become apparent, but basically it was trying to make a commentary I think, on the stigmatization of that space. And this brings out the idea that architecture can also indeed uh, be critical and through its uh, uh, projects uh, represent a commentary on the current state of society. Another example of uh, performance architecture could be uh, the work uh, of Andres Jaque with his Office for Political Innovation coming from Madrid. Uh, in this case, uh, a uh, performance that actually was 
the first architecture performance to be acquired by the Museum of Modern Art. Um, what he created was a sort of anthropological survey of the area around the museum so as to bring people that use their domestic space as political spaces into the museum to exchange with visitors their experiences of how they transform their houses into places of citizenship, uh, which in a, in a way represented an idea that talked about the fact that actually people are less passive politically than what you would expect when democracy apparently is being questioned on all sides. Uh, these two projects actually were included in, an, in the first exhibition I did at the Museum of Modern Art, which precisely responded to the situation of Occupy Wall Street. That is the Occupy Wall Street Journal up there that had been also recently acquired by the Architecture and Design Department uh, at MoMA. And uh, for me, this um, exhibition came out almost as a necessity, as a response, as a needed response to architects who in the block sphere were asking themselves, how can we contribute towards this kind of movement? Because it seems like architects are not uh, actually corresponding uh, to these kind of acts. And for me, uh, being that the idea of polis is intimately associated to the idea of the political, it seemed that architects were indeed political, and by intervening in urban space, they were inevitably producing political statements, even if they were not aware or uh, they were uh, producing them unconsciously. So the um, uh, exhibition was a survey of uh, projects in the collection of MoMA, which I thought had some sort of political intention and not uh, typically the representation of power, for example. So it was more about the political as cultural intervention. And by the way, because MoMA has a collection that typically represents the master builders and therefore excludes certain narratives, uh, in the case of social responsibility and uh, social commitment, uh, I would say that I had to acquire a number of pieces to be able to construct uh, a minimally solid uh, section. Another project that was part of that section, which I think is very relevant uh, to the discussion today, is the work of Raum Labor, Berlin-based Raum Labor, a collective of architects, uh, which actually is addressing many of the questions that we are facing today in Europe, including the refugee crisis. This was a commission by the city of Torino for a periphery where the immigrant community that lived there uh, had no real conditions to meet, to have a sort of uh, meeting place, community place, uh, but in which the city itself didn't find the resources to respond to that specific problem. So they tried a different approach, one that may have also uh, political implications which are complicated, but that at least means trying to do something. And so they invited these group of architects that typically organizes a workshop with people so as to design and construct uh, the building itself or the intervention itself just by using um, uh, waste material that they find in the streets. So children participated in these, older people participated in this process, and they created something that for me is representative of an empowerment of the community, of the local community, in which the architect is but a mediator. It's only a new way of understanding the role of the architect, really. And actually, this brings me to the idea of tactical urbanism, which is the second uh, emergent trend that I see happening uh, in architecture nowadays, with different variants in the United States, in Europe, in Latin America, but that represents, again, an attempt to grab what is uh, what is already a grassroots movement, a bottom-up movement in which people are taking matters into their own hands and in responding to, again, uh, emergent problems in the city. And this is the theme of our panel, the fact that cities are growing, populations are becoming more urban, a fact that was uh, uh, also coincidentally uh, very discussed into the 
in 2008 when the population, 50% of the population became urban, but that is now growing much faster. One aspect of the discussion that is not so uh, evident is, in the same text that presents that first quote, is also the fact that two-thirds of the urbanites in 20 years will be poor. Not necessarily here in Malmo or in Copenhagen, but distributed around the world, there will be 66% 66, 66 of the people, or even 70% of the people in cities that will be uh, in cycles of poverty that they cannot escape. And these cities, normally poor cities in the south, uh, but also uh, predictably even cities in Europe as we impoverish, uh, these cities won't have the resources to solve those problems. So again, how do we face this? Uh, and this was for me uh, a problem that was similar to previous exhibitions organized at the Museum of Modern Art that talked about climate change or talked about the foreclosure uh, crisis in the United States. Uh, for me, this was like a catastrophe that was coming and that many people was not aware of at that time. This was proposed in 2012, but then inequality certainly became part of the agenda for many people. And so the idea here was how can we take actually inspiration from those tactical urbanisms? Uh, and when I say take inspiration was because the uh, exhibition was all about considering six big cities around the world and imagining scenarios in which in the future architects uh, or urban planners would already be working with these tools that represent uh, bottom-up impulses. But of course, uh, actually... Uh, although these scenarios were the exercise of the exhibition, and I give you two examples here, one in which a young collective of uh, Spanish architects uh, down in the bottom was investigating how people express themselves in the streets and how could they turn these improvisations in the street into prototypes that would uh, sort of form the image of the city of the future. And in the other case, in Istanbul, uh, uh, the work of Atelier d'Architeur de Algerie and Superpool, in which actually digital platforms were the tool that allowed people to again uh, socialize, exchange uh, different uh, services and abilities and capabilities to make what is still nowadays the monofunctional periphery a place that would be again alive with uh, activity. There is much to say about these, but in fact, what I wanted to talk about here today was not exactly these scenarios for the future, but actually the uh, crowdsource, the crowdsource platform that we created to map out what were the tactical urbanisms that were already in place. And this is what we, uh, particularly in Vienna, when the exhibition was presented in Vienna during the first uh, Vienna Biennial for Change, uh, this for me was really almost a subversive uh, part of the project, which was to reveal what was already happening. And I'm giving you just a few examples that we can explore in discussion, but just for you to understand the, the sort of range of projects that go from the very traditional, the way people, communities, always organize street festivals and transform public space uh, to change the character of that space for a few days, uh, to interventions by young urbanists in which this idea of uh, situationist uh, displacement in which you uh, suddenly uh, feel a, sh a shift in perception on the image of the city uh, causes uh, a certain disruption, or the work of artists who have been leading many of these tactical urbanisms in which, again, you you get a very different deception of what public space could be, uh, I would say in a very provocative manner, but also, uh, for instance, the fact that models of bicycles that you have here, that cities like New York, Paris have shared uh, bicycle schemes, is brought to poor neighborhoods, which obviously cannot even afford uh, that kind of investment, and uh, are operated by children during the weekend and by workers during the week. 
but also initiatives from the government, like in Venezuela, the peace projects, the space uh, for peace projects, in which uh, interventions, very temporary interventions in spaces, are considered a possibility of triggering change in terms of a violent uh, site, uh, site of conflict. Or finally, just to give you, to close with um, another example of the conjunction of the work of local authorities with architects, the cases in Colombia, very well known in Medellin and Bogota, but with an example that for me, I think is significative of a major shift in the field of architecture, which connects to the idea that we have seen architecture over the last 20 years being used as a branding device in the competition of cities that we have described uh, here today. And I think the iconic quality that comes from uh, the architectural intervention as a cultural or artistic project becomes even more significant when you're offering those sort of strong images to populations that before these had absolutely nothing. So there is an empowerment that comes from the artistic power of the discipline of architecture that can be expressed when you suddenly are investing uh, architecture in places that before at most would have the most basic infrastructural um, uh, situations, if so. That is all. Thank you.